Hi guys, I just wanted to work through one of the problems on monopolies from chapter 11. Uh, so this is off of your quiz. And so in this problem we have a graph here that represents um, a monopoly. So we have our demand curve, we have our marginal cost curve, and we have our marginal revenue curve. And uh, we're asking this problem to figure out what the consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss are. And so in order to do that we first need to figure out what quantity is this monopoly going to produce and at what price will they sell their good. So uh, the rule for any profit maximizing firm, monopoly or not, is that they set their marginal revenue equal to their marginal cost. So first we locate that point on our graph right here and that tells us what quantity we're going to produce down on this axis and so that quantity is then 30. And in order to figure out then what price this monopoly is going to charge, we go to our demand curve. Right? The demand curve always tells us for any quantity that might be, uh, that might be sold or bought, what price are consumers willing to pay for it. And so at a quantity of 30, the demand curve is telling us consumers are willing to pay a price of 60. And so, being a profit maximizing firm, that's the price that our monopolist will set, which is 60. So now we're equipped to answer our questions. So we first want to figure out how much is the consumer surplus. And as always, the consumer surplus is given by the area that's below the demand curve and above the price that the consumers pay. So that gives us this triangle here. And we go all the way out to the quantity that gets sold. So our consumer surplus is this triangle, and we just need to figure out what the area of that is. And so to do that, we know it's the area of a triangle, so that's going to be 1 half base times height. So 1 half. Our base is this area, this length here, so that goes from 0 to 30. So our base is that length, and our height is right here, so that's 90 minus 60. And so our consumer surplus then is just 30 times 30, or 30 squared, over 2, which is 450. So that's our consumer surplus. Next up, we want to figure out how much is our producer surplus. And the producer surplus is always given by the area that's below the price that the producer gets to receive, which is this 60 above their marginal cost of production, which is this line here, and as far out as the quantity that actually gets produced. So that leaves us with this trapezoid area here. So this is our producer surplus, everything inside of here. Okay, And so the easiest way to figure out that is just to divide it up into two areas. So rather than trying to figure out what the formula for area of a trapezoid is, Let's just first find the area of this rectangle, and then find the area of this triangle. Okay, so our producer surplus is this rectangle. Uh, the area of that is just given by this length here. So that's 30 minus 0 is that length, multiplied by the height of the rectangle, which is 60 minus 30. And we add to that the area of this triangle down here, so we get 1 half. Our base is this right here, so 30 minus 0. And our height is this length right here, so again 30 minus 0. And what we get is 30 times 30, so 30 squared, plus 1 half of 30 times 30, so 30 squared over 2. So that's 900 plus 450, which is 1350. So that's our producer surplus. Next we want to know how much is the deadweight loss. And our deadweight loss is always given by this triangle over here. Right? It's the difference between what welfare would have been 
in a perfectly competitive market and what welfare is in this not perfectly competitive market, in this monopolized market. So this triangle over here represents our dead weight loss and the area of that is one half times our base here which is 60 minus 30 times the height of that triangle. The height is here. It goes from 30 to 45. So 45 minus 30. And so our dead weight loss is 30 times 15 over 2, which is 225. Okay, so that's our dead weight loss. And then next we want to know what monopoly welfare is. And so welfare is always just the total gains to all, all participants in this market. And in this market, the only participants are the buyers and the sellers. Sometimes we see government as a participant, so their revenue would also be part of the total welfare. But in this case, there's no government intervention, so we're just concerned with our consumers and our producers. And so monopoly welfare is just the sum, so call that TW for total welfare, is the sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus. And that's equal to 450 plus 1350, which is equal to 1800. So that's our monopoly welfare. And then the last thing we want to know is, uh, is monopoly welfare less than, equal to, or greater than competitive welfare? And just by the fact that there is a deadweight loss, that tells us that welfare is lower in this market than it would be under perfect competition. So monopoly welfare has to be less than. And in particular, it's less than the competitive welfare by exactly the amount of the deadweight loss. So the reason behind that is that this deadweight loss represents the difference between, for every one of these units that goes unsold because of a monopoly, in perfect competition, we would have this quantity of 45 being sold. In Monopoly, we only have 30 being sold. So each of these 15 extra units, notice that demand is way up here. So that tells us that there are people that value this item at more than the marginal cost of producing it. So in an ideal setting, these extra units should get traded. There's a value that exceeds the cost of producing them for all of these units, all the way until we get to this competitive output of 45. And because they're not produced under a monopoly, no one gets that gain. The producers aren't getting the profit from it, the consumers aren't getting their value, their enjoyment from it. And so in a monopoly, that's a loss, and that's our deadweight loss.